The following is brought to you by the Social Suplex Podcast Network. This is Jordan Grace, and you're listening to the Social Suplex Podcast Network. BWB, this is One Nation Radio. You better get it right. Rich Ladder, James Boyd came to give them life. The Blackest Wrestling Podcast has come to kick all ass and drop it six feet if they're kicking trash. Word, let me welcome y'all to something different. And if you dig it, man, you should let some friends listen. We be getting it in this on the regular, dude. Ravish and flow, but this shit rule. See, James don't rap, so I had to break it down. The whole network, man, we coming for the crown. Raps in the columns, I keep them both covered Making the beats too, so the listeners can bump it Hit us with the rating, yeah, I'm saying it's a five Before you hit it, talk, bob your head side to side It's One Nation Radio, and this is the beginning It's Rich, and I'm here with James It's time to listen to One Nation The power of the power this is Mike Sempervivi from WrestlingObserver.com. Check me out on Wrestling Observer Live every day. And also check out your boys, Rich and James, on One Nation Radio. Uh, this is Kenny Omega. We're listening to One Nation Radio. Check it out, guys. These guys know what's up. Big Kenny Omega fans. That's all it counts to me. Goodbye and good night. Bang. Welcome to the August 15th edition of One Nation Radio. I'm your host, Rich, and I'm sitting here with James. James, what's going on, man? I'm doing really well. The main event to NXT this tonight was great. So I'm, I'm in really happy, really good high spirits right now. Yeah. That's what's up, man. And um, joining us for the first time, we got a special guest from socialsuplex.com, our resident NXT reviewer, uh, Mr. Thomas Gambardella. What's going on, Tom? Not a whole lot. I just got finished watching that uh, the same episode of NXT. Uh, Kyrie Sane had a badass ending tonight, so that was pretty cool. Excellent, man. We've been wanting sure to get did. you uh, on the show for a while, man. Th- thanks for joining us. Yeah, I'm glad to be here. Glad to get the uh, get the chance to do it. For sure, man. Um, so we got a bunch on deck today. Um, obviously, we got some NXT talk, so I definitely wanted to bring Tom in for his expertise. He's been covering the uh, NXT stuff so great on uh, socialsuplex.com, popping me every other line that he writes. Um, also, um, <clears throat> we've got uh, SummerSlam to talk about, um, and we've got uh, the the expansion of our uh, segment that I've been doing on these previews of Sidelined. So uh, stay tuned for uh, that that new Sidelined theme song later, um, featuring you know a lot of folks and all that. But make sure you guys are rating and reviewing the Social Suplex Podcast Network real real high. Uh, we're an independent podcast network, and our budget right now comes from word of mouth. The only way we're going to reach more people is with your help by sharing the show and rating it. Uh, uh, make sure you guys check out the Outsider's Edge, uh, the Ricky and Clive wrestling show, keeping it strong style, and grown men watch this shit. Um, also, I dropped a rant for um, like Hiroshi Tanahashi winning the G1 that seems to be doing very well on YouTube, and a lot of folks enjoying it, and it's on the end of keeping it strong style this week. Uh, maybe I'll tack it on at the end here as well, uh, but yeah, the ace is still the ace. So um, yeah, man, uh, we're going to go ahead and pause for a moment then we will be back with uh, a preview for nxt takeover brooklyn four all right man first thing we got on deck today nxt takeover brooklyn four uh the fourth consecutive year as evidenced by the number of them going to brooklyn and this thing started with sasha and bailey and finn balor and kevin owens and it has just grown exponentially this is kind of like the nxt uh wrestlemania uh tom what are your overall feelings going on you know going into this show about nxt where they stand right now and is this the best period of nxt that we've ever seen I think we're definitely in the best period that NXT has had. I mean, the run from pretty much probably Brooklyn 3 through New Orleans is just some of the better wrestling I've ever watched. I mean, looking at the card for this show, it looks really stacked. I mean, you got Gargano and Ciampa who have already had two, like, five-ish star quality matches. I don't know exactly what the ratings were on those, but, I mean, they're definitely going to tear it up, even without Aleister Black out there. I'm most excited for Mustache Mountain and Undisputed Era, just because I'm more of a tag team wrestling mark, but... Overall, really solid card. James, what you, uh, what you, what are your feelings uh, going into this? My feelings going into it is that there are, I mean, you know, I think I want to say maybe this was the world, the Philadelphia takeover, or was the uh, the actual New Orleans 
takeover where there were six matches and it was a three hour show and we you know people were kind of have kind of hesitant and worried that maybe they might you know do the more is more thing because after all this is wwe but seeing that it is a five match card it, it seems that they're going back to the form that they've always done and this is the formula of success and you know, it's kind of happy to hear uh triple h on uh, his press conference is saying like he he preferred to keep it where it's at right now. Like he likes to keep the level of success where it is, and it's been working for him. So it's, so that's good that he doesn't really see the need to change yet. Anyway, but I think I think the formula is is a uh, tried and true. And I mean, with the influx of talent that he's that they've gotten um, since the you know I guess you want to call them the graduations of the Baileys and the Sashas and the Nevilles and and Zanes of the world and Kevin Owens to where we are now. Like this is they have. Take they have raised the bar from where we from where we previously were. Where, you know, it's not expected that we're just gonna have a great show. We're expected to have like a paper, uh, you know, a, a card of the year contender every single time, every three, every two to three months. And you know, this is just this thing is just. I, I hope I hope this thing continues because this is the best thing WWE has ever done. Yeah, um, I I think. You know, I was going back to New Orleans, I think that's the best WWE card they've ever done. Um, and this is essentially like the wrap up for a lot of those, uh, you know, storylines. You've got the Mustache Mountain and Undisputed Era thing coming all the way to the peak now, uh, you know, with their great TV matches with the uh, one in the UK. You got Adam Cole and Ricochet who are in that six man going at it. You got EC3 and Velveteen Dream uh, in that six man also. And then you have Gargano and Chapo on top, which is defined this year in NXT. I don't think you can get any hotter uh, going into this. And, of course, you got Kyrie Sane and Shayna Baszler in a rematch from the Mae Young Classic carrying all that goodwill. And if you guys saw NXT this week, th- like, the look that Kyrie Sane gave Shayna Baszler just, like, like that would... She served her a look, as they say. So... Yeah. Uh, and, and she said so much without saying anything at all. So... <laughs> um, yeah. I, I, why would I you start say there? For... What, Oh, I, I just wanted to say for all the talk of the Ronda Rousey face, I want to say the most underrated face in all the pro wrestling right now is Kyrie Sane's I Will Murder You face. It, it, and the first time I noticed it was actually going into the last, or at the very end of the last episode of the Mae Young Classic before um, they went to the final where they go face to face with her and Shayna, and they're up on the stage in front of the trophy, and it's like, yo, I didn't know she, I, you know, I always thought she was a smiley baby face. She, This thing is incredible. And she's flashing it more and more, and you know she she's finally getting her t- her time now to actually you know do this and she's in there with somebody that she's had a great match with before so I'm I'm expecting to tear the house down as well. Tom, what 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 are your uh, impressions of, of Shayna Baszler and uh, Kyrie saying, especially like Shayna's development? She was kind of you know made the champion a lot faster than a lot of other people have been. And how do you think she's done the role? And also you know could this be Kyrie's crowning moment? You know I. Uh... It's funny to talk about like her getting made champion a lot faster than a lot of people thought because I originally kind of thought the wrong person won the Mae Young Classic. Like obviously you want the babyface to win the tournament, you want that like feel good moment, I guess. But I mean, with the booking after it, I feel like it kind of would have made sense to have Shayna Baszler win the tournament. But I mean, you know, she still got her win, she still got her title run. I I still feel like Dakota Kai should be the person to beat Shayna Baszler for the title. I don't know if she's gonna. I don't think they're gonna do it, but. I just feel like they have the history built in there. So I don't know if it's going to be Kyrie's like crowning moment. Gotcha. So you said Dakota Kai. Now she had, uh, if I'm not mistaken, Shayna had like whooped her ass several times and there had been like a couple like tense interviews, Shook. right? Yeah. Oh yeah. No, she, she got bodied multiple times on TV. <laughs> Scared to death. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I don't know if that's necessarily going to be the play. I think, you know, they still got Bianca Belair lurking in the background, uh, eventually that's Candace true. LeRae. So I'm not sure. It, it might be a longer road um, for uh, Dakota Kai, but, you know, moving on, uh, we got Mustache no, Mountain. Oh, I'm sorry. Hold on, yeah, no, 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 no. We, we, we can't talk about Bianca Belair without, and talk about Dakota Kai without her also burying uh, her by calling her, like, the captain of team kick, whatever the fuck that is. Like, she, <laughs> like yo, they, they, they made her, like, they made her. Dakota Kai look like the biggest geek in the world like, like the whole thing and like you know it's gonna take I mean obviously it's a long that's a long overarching uh, that's a long character beat and that's gonna take have to take place over like a, you know at least another year to repair all that like where she has to you know oh, yeah. start more people to build to that but like if you want an underdog 
that's as under as this is going to yeah, get. Yeah, she already she way down there right now. So, <laughs> and she, oh, yeah. yeah, she's a and she's a convert, and she's a good wrestler. She's, un, uh, she's undeniably a good wrestler, but they made her look so weak during that whole thing. No, they really did. Getting bullied, pro pro fighter getting bullied yes. by another pro fighter. Yes. Um, Undisputed Era and Mustache Mountain have been having some of the best tag team matches I've ever seen in my life. Um, right up there, you know, pretty much anything in WWE history and maybe even beyond. Um, these guys, their, their second match was, you know, and I'm pretty much, I, I, I don't give a damn about, like, you know, what I hear about, like, storytelling and psychology. To me, that just sounds like a bunch of, like, bullshit. But they had a match that was, like, the epitome of what that, what I think people mean by that. And I think, you know, that was, like, one of the best matches we've ever seen in NXT. Um, how the hell do they follow this? Now, like, is this a situation? Is this the Okada and Omega of tag teams where they're just like, all right, we did it before. We'll do it again. I think like they definitely have a really tough act to follow with the last two. I mean, I don't really know where they go. I mean, it's still a normal tag team match. There's no stipulation on it. So it's going to be really hard to follow. I hope they just do like pretty much what Gargano and Almas did where it's early in the match. They just do like, you can tell these people have wrestled each other's spots. But I mean, other than that, like these guys definitely can pull it off. It's just going to be a really hard act to follow. James. Yeah. Uh, I don't know about topping it. I mean, this, I mean, that was one of the best tag. That might be the best tag match I've ever seen. Uh, but, but, um, they're damn, they're damn sure going to try it. If you saw uh, bait versus uh, Roddy tonight, <laughs> You know they're not even they're not even concerned about you know reserving themselves, uh, given that they're you know given the time being. I mean obviously this is pre taped but like them dudes, why did they why did they hit so hard? <laughs> why did they hit each other so hard? Like yo, I understand you know British strong style and Roddy, you know you have to do that sort of thing to get work to where he's at at that height. But yo, they. Like, of, no, no, you Derek. know, we talked, we talked about, we talked about Ishii and, and go, Ibushi say, and throat punches or whatever else. But like, you say got those throat punches and that match is every bit as dangerous, as dangerous as all, as all these other matches that people talk about. Like, you know, it makes New Japan so, so disastrous. Like outside of dropping people on your head, that's about as dangerous a match you could possibly have. I was going to say they're uh, submitting their bid for the uh, Tomohiro Ishii All-Stars. So yeah, uh, real strong style. Yeah. Uh, I think that these guys got, but, but I expect them, but I expect them to have a match that can, that can rival what they did, honestly. And I mean, trying to top it, I mean, that's it, such a hard thing. Cause you know, it's all about, you know, a time and place and, and, you know, being able to everything they get hit work just perfectly or whatever else. But, um, I think, you know, I think they're definitely going to have, I think they could, I, I'll probably put them as the favorites to have the best match of WrestleMania weekend from that, from, uh, from out of WWE, that I, I I think I'll put them up for even Gargano and Champa. So yeah, I um, think I would agree with that. Yeah, um, I th- I think these guys definitely have their work cut out for them, but they're going to be ready to play. Uh, hopefully, Trent Seven's like knee feels good. Hopefully, that's not like a kayfabe thing I'm being worked <laughs> on. So. Um, but moving on after that, uh, we have Ricochet versus Adam Cole. Ricochet is a guy who I think should be a top star in WWE eventually one day. And I don't mean like wrestling in the main event. I mean being the main event. Um, he's going in there with uh, Adam Cole, who, um, you know, for me, isn't the greatest wrestler in the world. But he's got a wave of momentum that folks just they, they want to chant his catchphrase and they um <clears throat> have built something with undisputed era for him that NXT hasn't really had uh that I can't I, I can really think of uh, correct me if I'm wrong but like we don't really see stables too often in NXT right yeah no you you got it there they really haven't had that before so um this match like it, it's weird because it's like this is the first real mid card championship match, like of a one on one. So it's really going to be interesting to see how NXT uh, gauges this. Uh, what What do you think, Tom, uh, needs to happen on this? And then what do you think uh, sh- or will happen? I think. I mean, you hit the nail right on the head. Like Adam Cole's match quality is not where some of the other people in NXT have it, but I do think he needs to retain here, just because I think I was saying this like on the New Orleans preview I wrote, like the first person to hold this belt kind of needs to hold it for a while and really just make it mean something. 
And I feel like you can't really have that happen if you're switching it on the first takeover defense of it. And I mean, I like Ricochet a lot. Like, I think he is going to be a star. He should be a star. Like, but I just don't think he needs to win the belt right now. I don't know where he goes if he loses here, but I, I think Cole needs to retain. James. Yeah, I mean, it's the unspeared era, so in this is NXT, and I know in on takeover you really don't do like you know fuck finishes or whatever else, but this could be one of the rare cases where this would be called for to where they you know they cheat him, and and then that leads to you know British strong style and ricochet versus uh, versus the undisputed era plus with uh, Fish back. I don't know when he's back. I, I would assume he's been back. He's been gone for a minute. He's been gone for a while. Um, leading into war games or what have you. And that'd right. be the matchup because you have to figure out someone how to get them to war games. And that would be the perfect thing where they're, he's still the champion, still chasing at them, still very mad about it. And it leads you to them having um, war games or as, uh, as y'all say, you know, I, the double cage match because y'all were so upset about how war games worked out. But yeah, I, I mean, outside of that, I mean, I think this match could, I think this match will be, I honestly think this will be the fourth best ma- best match on the card. Personally, that, I mean Cole. Outside of him taking really crazy, dangerous, stupid bumps, I don't really know what he really. You know, I don't. I don't really have a feel for him yet as a as a competitor. I feel like he's um, like a in, in big he's matches. a generalist. So <laughs> <laughs> you know, like yeah, I mean, USC. you know, he has a thing going for him. He has charisma or whatever. He has charisma for him. He definitely has a stand for him. Like, I mean, you if you guys saw that promo um, on t- oh, I'm sorry, I'm taking wrong. And they see tonight. I mean, they're pretty much they're pretty much just doing like the old black and white NWO promos, right? Where oh, yeah. it's like, like what, what's next? You're like, I'm gonna buy I'm gonna buy a sports team. You know, it's like they just they just, just like the biggest. They're just like the biggest pricks in the world, but like they're kind, but they're charming at the same time. So it's like Shit. you you know you kind of you know you want to boo them, but at the same time you're like, yo, it'll be cool to hang out with these pricks. Yeah. Like, no, so, no, oh, the, yeah. Only, the only thing that he could have said was uh, he was trying to buy a platinum football field. So <laughs> you know, put platinum eyebrows on these. Like, I ain't gonna do oh, it. Oh man. Um. Yeah, man. But uh, I, I'm expecting Rick, Rick Shea to wow us all, and probably Cole will retain, but I don't think Rick Shea will be hurt by it or anything. Um. But moving on, we got EC3 in the Velveteen Dream. Now, this is like the funniest feud. And Tom, I don't know if you heard us talking about this last week, but uh, me and James like basically clowned them for doing that whole scene in front of the pool in the apartment complex oh, and everything like great. that. Oh, man. It, it was like, it was so funny. Like, uh, so cool. This, so corny. Velveteen Dream it was fun, is. Lo- but it was so corny. Velveteen Dream uh, got a win over Cassius Ono, but. For the majority of the uh, of Dream's whole thing, it really hasn't. He's been bulletproof in a sense, w- way earlier than one would think. Does he need a big win here? I I kind of feel like he needs to at least get one takeover win. I mean, and honestly, like this is one of my hot takes of the night. Like I could see, or I wouldn't hate it if this was EC 3s like last match in NXT because like. I feel like at every takeover, it's like, oh, like we know who's going up on Monday or Tuesday. But going into this card, I really don't see anybody where it's like, yeah, they're done here, they're done here, they're done here. And I feel like EC3 is one of the only people that's like really ready for main roster right now, or at least ready and not involved in anything that's going to keep him in NXT. Right. So I could see Dream getting the win here. I mean, I think he needs it. He's obviously going to stay over if he doesn't win, but like. At some point, you do need him to start winning big matches. Right. James? Yeah, I agree. And now I, I really didn't think about this until you brought it up. But as far as people moving up, yeah, EC3 would make purpose sense because seeing that he's done TNA, he has an idea, he knows a lot, he knows a few of the people that are already up there, send his ass to Raw, make him a heel, put him back in that suit, and make him and make him the number two or three heel on the Raw uh, male single side because they desperately need all the heels in the world that are better than Baron Corbin and Mojo Rawley and and you know and Jinder Mahal. So Keep definitely, <laughs> definitely. I mean, I, I mean, you know, the point, like, they definitely just rattle off the names. They, yes, yeah, they just definitely need somebody better than Baron Corbin as your number uh, two everyday heel. Like that's not, nah, that's that's not that's not gonna, that's not going to cut it, not at all. But as far as Dream. You know, I. You do get this. You still do start to worry, even though that um, even though I think he's a star and he's bulletproof. You do kind of worry that if he takes more and more of these L's, is he going to be like basically 
a, a like a, a like a Bill Gates version of um a Bill Gates version of I was a uh, fake Zoolander's name. I'm, uh, Tyler, Tyler, Breeze. Tyler Breeze. Yeah, yeah. You worry about you worry about him being basically like oh a bigger, more charismatic uh, guy that's just like, oh yeah he's just out here just to lose the, the the super indie guys. That's all he's here for. He's just yeah. a job for the star. <laughs> like maybe if they bring in like uh, maybe if they bring in I don't know uh, who could be a, a gigantic Japanese legend. Uh, let's say oh they bring in I don't know Tanahashi. Oh he'll job for him the same way that like. That breeze job for Liger. The same thing, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's like, no, yeah. Kind of yeah. need a... You, you, he's ain't like, coming here to lay down. This, yeah, like, you look at the card, like, not too many of these people are, are you know, quote-unquote homegrown talent. A lot of these are mercenaries. And, you know, we last the last takeover, you know, we we, we did have to applaud them for, for putting... Um, for putting uh, your boy, uh, Mongrel. What's Mongrel's name? Gargoyle boy. Uh, Lars Sullivan. Yeah, I almost called him Fabian Aguirre. That's not him, but you're Lars. Yeah. You put Lars oh. in, this, in that spotlight. Like, that was definitely, and also have a dream with that match. Like, if you are developmental and also a third brand super indie, like, you're going to have to find that balance between that. But you can't have, you know, you can't have Ricochet and Adam Cole. You can't have Gargano and Ciampa. Uh, you know, you can't have. Keith Lee and Matt Riddle all, who are due all, to come all, in. All the ring, all, yeah, yeah. All the ring of honor guys, plus, you know, you can't you can't do that when not having any of these guys on here and he's in right now he's the number one homegrown guy that or homegrown person they have right now so you know they they kind of you kind of need to groom them along so they need to give him some wins yeah that leads us to um the championship match Johnny Gargano uh taking on as James would say dude um <laughs> or said, Tommaso Ciampa. I said his name twice on here and both times I said I was like, oh yeah, I messed it up, but whatever. Oh man, uh, so this this match uh, this wasn't the original match that was uh, originally uh, announced. It was supposed to be a triple threat with Aleister Black. Getting uh, from that whole feud, I was getting a lot of Bret Hart, Shawn Michaels, Undertaker, nineteen ninety seven vibes uh, from it, but <laughs> they, they they didn't end up getting the chance to follow through on it. Uh, where you know Gargano was eventually going to turn into this prick, and Bret Bret would be Ciampa in this scenario, and Black is Undertaker, but. But um, it's been changed to a last man standing match. Uh, the theory goes it's impossible to have a bad last man standing match. I don't know. What, what, what are you guys thinking about uh, this match? Is it the the time to crown Johnny? Like, is, is this it? Or is just Chamba just so, like, fucking detestable right now? Like, you just, like, keep this shit going. I feel like, like, I feel like this would be, like, the perfect NXT moment, kind of, if we're looking at it. Because, like, I'm pretty sure this is the last year they're running Brooklyn for SummerSlam weekend. You've got Gargano in what I think is going to wind up being the best NXT like character arc of all time. You've got Ciampa, who's probably the most overheal they've had. And I feel like just the pop to end the show on Gargano winning would be it would be the perfect moment. I feel like it's time to crown him. James? If they had made him the champion, they made Johnny the champion at Philadelphia – and that same match happens where he gets to win after he has the Gargano escape slapped on him. And then he still celebrates. And then dude comes through with a crutch and they hits him and then crash across the back of his head. This would have been the hottest thing like in years in the, in anything the company's done, like probably since Daniel Bryan. Right. Um, and this was still a gigantic hot feud and one of the best things they've done since Daniel since the Daniel Bryan run towards uh, WrestleMania 30. So um, it's time. It's been time. You know, they're lucky that they're lucky that this is that uh, NXT fans are this patient as opposed to the main roster fans that just have no faith at all, because this would already been past the peak and we would already moved on from it. Um they kind of in much the same way that uh, TLC last year, where they kind of lucked them. Basically, people got sick. They lucked into a better card. Where like you don't have Ray Wyatt um, dressing as Sister Abigail, and you don't have uh, Roman Reigns. So therefore, you get AJ Styles to come in and fight in a, in a very in a great match with with Finn Balor and kind of not not ruin their careers. You kind of have lucked yourselves into a fortuitous card where you have the main event actually be for the title, which is. You know, it was not happening when they had, you know, I mean, just be real. Like, it was not happening when you had Black in the main event or Black as a champion. Like, the main event was Johnny Gargano versus Dude, and now we get the final one, seemingly the final one, the trilogy. And 
I think I'm gonna tear the house down. Like I, I heard from, uh, or not even hear from him, but I was listening to Observer Live today, and Alvarez said that like they're getting a lot of time, so this thing is going to be epic, of course. So yeah, I, I'm, I, I'm very excited. I'm very, I'm very excited. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm ready to, uh, to as you say, I'm ready to get my tickets to the Largo Loop for when, uh, for when, you know, just in case. Well, we we gonna see on Saturday, and I'm I'm you know I, I think I might just turn my phone off. I don't want to talk to y'all. I just want to sit there and just you know be in it and then just absorb all of the greatness. Yeah, man. I, I just the the only thing I, I caution with this match was I last match I thought they were getting into hokey territory at the end of it. Um, now with the last man standing stuff, you know Gargano has a tendency to do like the melodramatic, ridiculous stuff with his face, and I don't know, man. I hope that they don't go too, too long uh, where they go past the peak because that's like the dirty secret with all the revival matches and DIY matches. They never seemed like they ended at the same time or at the right time. And I felt like some of that's carried over to uh, Gargano's singles career. But yeah, because the wrong person always the wrong person tends to win in like the match that he's in on takeover. And then it's like like. They have like a perfect finish there, and then it goes like five more minutes. And it, I don't know, mm-hmm. it's just a small nitpick. But um, yeah, I, I'm really. I mean, you're, abs- you're absolutely right. Like the first, you're absolutely right. Like the first, uh, like the set, like Brooklyn 2, the first DIY revival match. Like there were like two or three times in that match where, like, that's a perfect tag team finish or epic uh, championship tag match. And But they kept going because it was t- revival's turn to win. And then. You know, the second match they had in Toronto is when they had, you know, they had the better match because the right team won because of the way the match was laid out. Right. And you look <sighs> at these Gargano matches going through from, from Brooklyn uh, 3 till now, and, like, he loses he loses some of these matches, but, like, he's so great in them, and you're just like, wow, I came away feeling like I was robbed of something. Yeah. Um, and I mean, and that's, and that's kind of <clears throat> what you want out of a great baby face, and, you know, but hopefully that's not the case on Saturday. Like the right person won, new champion, you know, that'd be great. Um, say Johnny does win the title, and before we wrap this up, who who do you guys think would be a uh, a great opponent uh, to, for him to face next if this championship like is completely done? If they don't like you know stretch it out any further, which I feel like they'd be getting into uh, like you know overkill territory if they do that. Uh, yeah, who, I agree. Who who do you guys like see? Like would you throw like a shocker in there and have like Keith Lee jump out at the end of the night or something like that? I definitely wouldn't hate seeing Keith Lee challenge for the title so quick, but I mean, I don't think <laughs> like my mind immediately goes to Lars, which I realize probably shouldn't be the move considering he just lost in Chicago. And it looks like they're setting him up to be one of the people that attacked Aleister Black. I don't mm-hmm. know. If, I mean, also, note on Aleister Black. Is it bad that I kind of want Heavy Machinery to be the people that attacked him just for the most BS? <laughs> like, they did, like... Bro, they, they literally the whole, showed like, everybody. Kelly. They did the whole, like, Kathy Kelly with the tinfoil hat on segment tonight being like, here are the people who were at the scene. And, like, they just had Heavy Machinery in there for no apparent reason. So... I would laugh my ass off. Bro, they literally case. had everybody there. They 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 showed yeah. like fifteen different people on that. I was like, like, "What is this?" Like, like the Kevin only Kyrie out there. Yeah, yes. like the only people that that it couldn't possibly be is like the Street Profits, like uh, TM sixty sixty one, and I don't know. Like uh, it, it just seemed like everybody was suspect. Like this is they, they're, they're basically playing uh, who done They're it? basically playing Clue. They're playing <laughs> Clue. Also, NXT parking lot, the most safe, the most unsafe place in wrestling at this point. Yes. Poor Hideo. Don't go out there. But um, Hideo's, career, Hideo's career is still out in that parking lot. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So, I mean, I was just saying, um, I mean, my mind immediately went to Lars, which I think would be kind of soon to put him back in the title picture. Or I don't know if there's going to be a good time to put him back in the title picture because I feel like you only get one, like, monster challenge for the title spot, at least in a developmental show. Uh I mean, if EC3 stays down, he would seem like a logical pick, too, and they could build up the further, like, Dream gets cocky in his matches and loses again. But other than that, I really don't see a ton of people that, like, could be the next challenger. What do you guys think? James? I mean, Black seems like the obvious logical person because, I mean, he's a, he's a champion and never lost his title, and this is the main roster, and, you know, home projects when people get hurt. 
you know, so I, so I, I was I would assume that it's I would assume that he will get treated better than Finn Balor. So I, I think that uh, Alistair Black will be will be the the, the first person to get a crack at his, at the title again. Hey man, because just... he's still old and he and he got late. He got accosted like he's Shawn Michaels in '93. Look, I like Matt Riddle to jump the barricade and uh, hit him with a V trigger and, uh, and and you know just just get it popping immediately with Matt Riddle. But <laughs> I don't know if that's gonna happen. But I would like to see it in before that happens. But that's gonna wrap up our uh, NXT Takeover preview. Uh, we will be back with our SummerSlam preview. All right, the next thing we're going to talk about is WWE SummerSlam. Now, they call this the biggest party of the summer, second or third biggest show, depending on how you feel about the Royal Rumble. (sighs) All these matches on this card, I'm struggling to care. Uh, I'm looking at everything. I literally have one match I give any type of fuck about, and that's Dan Bryan and The Miz. But we're going to talk about everything, so why not just start at the presumed main event? Um... (laughs) Brock Lesnar uh, versus Roman Reigns, part 1000, uh, the definition of insanity, anything you want to add for the Universal Championship. Tom, what are your, uh, you know, what what have you thought about the buildup going into this? And then also stretching back to WrestleMania 34, how this whole thing has, you know, been presented to you? I mean, like, it, it's got to be the time they put it on Roman now, right? I don't know probably the last three Roman versus Brock matches, but like this has gotta be the one. Like I I don't know. It's I'm just so tired of it being Roman chasing Brock, Roman chasing Brock. Okay, now he's not chasing Brock for a little bit, but no he's back to chasing Brock now. Yeah. Like I I hope it's Roman going over in the main event, which is something I never thought I would say. But yeah, they did it. They worked me. They got me to want Roman Reigns to win a main event. So Man. I guess hats off for that. I I'm just really apathetic towards this match right now. What are you guys thinking? James? I'm thinking that if Roman Reigns loses again without, like, a cash-in, and I hope it's not another cash-in because that's, more, that's more delaying what the, the inevitable, inevitable is, which is him being the champion having a long run. But if he is – but if he just flat-out just loses to Lesnar and there's no cash-in, it just he just loses again, then, like, he's beyond looking like a plate of piss. Like, he, just, he looks like a used condom. God damn. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Um, with this match, now, they, they got those chants a couple weeks ago. Now they had the go-home show where they ended up uh, – it, it really felt like WrestleMania 34, the buildup, where Brock was coming back down to whoop his ass and the crowd was cheering. This whole thing is yes. such a fucking paradox of a mind fuck because it's like <laughs> – because it's like, all right, y'all have lowered Lesnar so much in the eyes of like the everyday fans, right? They've done, they've bent over, as I mentioned on you know previous shows, they've bent over backwards so far. They're on the other side, like for what they're doing to present Roman as this hero and everything else. Like, bro, people are not going for it. This is going to get shit on. The best thing they could do is have Roman Reigns destroy him in under what three minutes. That's what I would do. Just get it, get it the fuck over with. Just, just. I think that's that's where we're all at. We all just want to be over, as you as you said, James, uh, with the Keisha Cole shit. Like, yeah, I just I just want it to be over. Like, yes, bro. Put the belt on him. See what you have. Stop fucking running from it. Stop. Stop trying to say, like like reveal y'all intentions with Roman Reigns instead of trying to wrap him up in this pseudo bullshit. Like, oh no, he's not really the top guy. The, no bullshit. Give him the belt. We don't care who you made champion in these other other times. We don't give a fuck about gender. Brock Lesnar has not been even a thing like in the narrative of WWE the whole time he's had this belt. We don't care that AJ Styles is the champion because. Because you um, got his ass over on SmackDown. Y'all want to make Roman Reigns the number one guy. Have him with the belt to reflect that. The problem is, as we've mentioned and we've been alluding to, there are no heels ready. So, fucking prove it. That's what I, That's my challenge to WWE. Prove it to us. Because someone has to turn. It, it should be Roman. There's a Money in the Bank briefcase always lingering over this shit with, uh, you know, Strowman and uh, Owens. But to me, that just feels so predictable and played. And as James mentioned, that just leads us back to Roman Reigns chasing the title at WrestleMania 35, which 
I don't know about y'all. I'm not really here for it. At this point, Roman Reigns should be going into WrestleMania as the champion, and the intrigue should be who's going to beat him. But they've got their own bizarre fantasies with this thing. I've, I've seen these matches this year, the one in Saudi Arabia, the one in New Orleans. They were not good. I'm not expecting anything, you know, uh, blow away. I feel like the WrestleMania 31 match was an aberration at this point because they're literally just going to hit each other with the German suplex, the F5, the Superman punch, and the spear over and over and over again. They're going to let Paul Heyman lay these matches out and... (sighs) They out here, they out here butt mashing. Yeah, literally. Like they're starting <laughs> like, with they're, five they're, finishers. They're, like, like they're like they're in Street Fighter. Like they're like they're in Street Fighter Two Turbo, and all they're doing is Hadoukens. That's uh, that's all they're doing. Yep. It, uh, uh, all it is is Hadoukens and Shurukens. That's it. They're starting like, the match out with three finishers stocked. Yes. 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 Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> and you know, I mean, we talked about that about that that male singer single side about how weak that about how weak that roster side is, or sorry, how weak the hill side of that is. And I, I think there are, I think I've, I've identified. I'm sure there, are, there are probably are more, but I'm just not thinking about it. But I've identified three people that could immediately become hill and immediately like make make a hill turn at SummerSlam and and and, and try to you know try to stabilize the, the roster. And that would be uh, obviously. You know what they're going to do if if Strowman cashes in on if Roman Reigns wins and he cashes in on and um and Strowman cashes in on Roman they're going to say he's a heel he's a monster he cheated blah 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 even though there ain't a soul in that building that's going to that's going to boo uh, Braun Strowman they're going to lose their minds. Yep. Uh, you have you have Roman who could you know turn heel um some you know they can walk back all the stuff they did with Heyman why because we can undo anything we did. We're Thanos with the reality stone. Vincent Man is. Uh, or we can go with Dean Ambrose at the end of the night. You know, the shield is back together. And he puts and he puts the beast to both of them and, and says, I'm I'm coming after your titles or whatever, what have you, or something along those lines. Like, so um regardless of whatever else, like this needs to be done with Brock needs to get the fuck out of here. At least he needs to go away, at least, or whatever else. And I mean go away like he's like we don't see him. He's not the fucking champion, and this, and we're not letting the, the the brand just be completely, completely, just aimless and rudderless, and like nobody knows what matters, and or and just just a whole bunch of foolish happens. Like we need to have people on this show with the fundament with the fundamental basic of these guys are badasses. They fight each other, and they're fighting for this thing. That, let, that lets you know that identifies who's the best and who makes the most money and that all that and all that stuff comes with it. It's most famous or whatever else. And we need that back on the show. We desperately need that. Yeah. Any, any final thoughts on this match, Tom? Uh, just one more note. I mean, it's just bizarre to me that they keep holding up Brock as, oh yeah, he's a box office draw. We don't want him here every week because it's special when he comes around. And then they spend the past six months trying to get him go away heat with the fans. I, <laughs> I just don't understand it. <laughs> It's a mind fuck, must, bro. It's it's a complete paradox. Must be two sides. Yeah, must be two sides. <laughs> um. So yeah, the the other like marquee match. Uh, oh, hold, on, just... hold on, hold on, hold on. Before we get out of there, we're gonna end this like this. So I, I was on, I was on. Um, what you mean with with Simon and Rance last night? And I was talking about how how you felt about going about the program between uh, Lesnar and Roman going into WrestleMania this year. About how you felt like every time. They are face to face. Roman needs to be cracking this dude. He's to be on his ass, be whooping the beat, beating the snide this dude. And then when it comes to, it comes to WrestleMania time, he needs to beat this man in five minutes, get the fuck, and we can move the fuck on. He needs to crack this man to, uh, to, um, on Sunday, flat out. Crack this man, Roman. I don't care. Shoot on him. <laughs> <laughs> shoot on, shoot on if you have to. Wow. Be, beat beat him for real. That man your head. What you gonna do about it? Yes. Uh, I hope Roman Reigns doesn't get his head bust again in the main event uh, because that's, you know, not what you want to happen. Um, yeah, but I, I think Reigns needs to just win. And he's needed to win because it's hell, It's literally put WWE on pause since 2015. Four years. So let's let's get it going, man. Like Because, like, it's soul-sucking at this point. Um, 
something else that sucks is Alexa Bliss. Um, Alexa Bliss will be t- <laughs> um, taking on oh, uh, um, <laughs> oh, Ronda Rousey. Do <laughs> Look, Alexa Bliss is not suck. She's just mediocre. If you want to say that about Carmella, fine, but don't do that. That's not fair. <laughs> anyway, uh, Alexa know. Bliss is uh, sorry as defending the uh, the Raw Women's Championship <laughs> against uh, Ronda Rousey and. I've, I've been on a couple shows with Chad and, you know, everything like this. I My answer for this match is real simple. 10-second squash match. Hoggy Tonk Man versus the Ultimate Warrior. Can you guys do better than that? Uh, I can't do better than that. However, I think WWE can do better, uh, thinks they can do better than that. So, you know, they're going to sports entertain it. And, um, and I can see... You know, we're gonna look around and we're gonna pay attention to the results from um from Saturday Night's Takeover. I, if Kyrie's new champion, you know what that means. That means that like Stephanie Mann has a new heavy, and her name is Shayna Baszler, and she just double crossed one of her best friends. Oh my and god! And they have a story, and they can go to and they can go to WrestleMania and tell it, or they can go to Evolution and tell it. Tom, what are your so, thoughts on on this whole thing? I, I I'm now going to have nightmares uh, about that scenario. I'm I'm almost I'm not looking forward to the match that much, but I'm almost I'm almost looking forward to what BS WWE tries to pull to get us to believe that Alexa Bliss is actually credible in there against Ronda Rousey. Like they did it against Nia Jax at Mania. It should have been a squash match, but now they're back with legitimately like a former UFC champion, someone that should beat her in two minutes. And I'm almost so much bigger than her. Oh yeah. Like it's, I'm, I'm probably just going to wind up laughing as like they jump through hoops to get Alexa bliss to look credible against Ronda Rousey. And it's not like there's this thing where Alexa is this striker or this submission specialist that can like use some of those things to survive. This is just like a person who just literally just cheats and runs and all that. It's like, at some point, I think Ronda said, it ain't nowhere to run. Like, like I'm going to get you. Like, that, that's what this feels like. She is, is the, the bully told you to be there at 3 o'clock. Well, 3 o'clock's coming, uh, Alexa, so you got to run it. See, I almost got my pay-per-views mixed up. So, when Sasha fought uh, Alexa Bliss last year for the first time, was that at Great Balls of Fire or was that at SummerSlam? Great Balls of Fire. I think it was Great Balls of Fire. Okay. So, I was going to say... If y'all remember what she did at SummerSlam last year, all you know she'll just take the count on and leave with her fucking belt after getting her ass whooped. But I'm sorry, that was 11 months ago, not 12 months ago. So I'm sorry about that. And they actually at SummerSlam, they actually had a good match. Um, so uh, so I'll give us all, you know, that's just more of a feather in the cap for Sasha Banks and makes you wonder why the fuck her career is, on, her career is like in the danger zone. But uh, Alexa Bliss is out here, you know, five-time champ, about to, you know, t- about to have more title wins than John fucking Cena. But, Unbelievable. Um, yeah, man, like, I don't – this match does not need to be long. This match does not need to uh, have any foolishness attached to it unless it's going to re- directly relate to what Ronda is going to be doing at Evolution or even WrestleMania outside of that. Like, don't do, don't do, don't get too cute. Outside of that, don't get too cute. And like, if you know, and if Alexa must continue to be champion, I guess fine, whatever. But like, don't just don't make her, just don't make Rosie look stupid. Like, this is the only, this is the only, the only fucking thing you've done well since WrestleMania or or since WrestleMania to now. The only thing, don't fuck it up, please don't. I beg of you, do not. At the end, of, at the end of my Alexa Bliss rant, the last sentence was, "Please don't ruin Ronda Rousey." I'm begging y'all, please don't ruin Ronda Rousey. Um, for the WWE Championship, uh, AJ Styles and Samoa Joe are having a battle over uh, AJ Styles' personal ro- life on the road. Uh, he's he's hanging and banging uh, out, out in the clubs and, and and sacrificing his career and all this other stuff. Samoa Joe has said uh, to this man, "I already what disrespect him." What kind of editorializing are you doing? That's not exactly. That's not at all what this is about. <laughs> you said this man's out here. Uh, what you say he's out here banging around? I said clanging and, and banging. I, I said clanging and oh, banging. Clanging and, oh, clanging and banging. I'm sorry. I guess I must have heard you. Yeah. However, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Go on. Continue. He, he's sir, having please. all these late nights on the road. He's you know away from his family. You know he's defending the belt everywhere, sacrificing everything uh, for the sake of his his championship and. 
He told AJ Styles that AJ Styles' children would be rooting for him so they could have their dad back. My God. Yeah, uh, it, 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 that was really interesting. Um, it, it got personal real quick. And um, I'm interested, like, Tom, what do you think about this match? First off, that Joe promo was hard. I mean, I remember watching that just sitting there like, wow, he's got to be one of the top mic workers in there today. Uh, I mean, this match should, by all, like, logic be good, but logic is apparently not something WWE does much of. <laughs> so, I mean, if they just give him time and just say, yeah, no, go out there, have a match. Like, don't overproduce it. Just let the two guys go wrestle. I feel like it should be one of the better matches on the night. Is it going to be? I I can't make guarantees at this point, but it really should be. James? Yeah. I think it'll be one of the best matches of the night. Um, do I think that this match could will be as good as um, as it should be, given what's happened with um, an AJ Styles match so far this year, and given, like, uh, the, the issues with injury struggles with uh, with Joe since being up on the main roster, I'd say no. But at this point, I'll take really damn good um, anywhere I can get on the main roster because they, they that's not out in um, that's not out in like huge dispense right now. So I'll definitely I'll definitely take it where I can get it. Yeah, I, I, I'm kind of stuck on how I feel about this match. Like as far as like where it's going to achieve critically, um, I I'm kind of like shooting at like three and three quarters right now, uh, and that's kind of been Styles' benchmark uh, for much of the past year. Um, I don't know. Like as, I think Styles is, is at a point where you know he's on top. So maybe this is a good time to switch the title, uh, take a little bit of that load off of him, and see what Samoa Joe can do with it for a while. Like he's a big heel scary champion and it'll look good with the belt and you know it's i don't know if he's gonna be the biggest draw in the world or anything but you know they're not worried about drawing anymore so <laughs> you you don't really have to worry about that so um <clears throat> style it, it is really improbable and i'm happy for those guys because those guys started somewhere else and this couldn't be their own you know validation in a sense that like they should have always been here and they were passed over for you know all these reasons uh whether it's you know cosmetically or whether it's you know size or uh totally co- it- co- totally cosmetic don't even get don't even cut them no slack totally cosmetic one was too short the other one was too the other one was not was was not in shape also aj uh, too- definitely for their liking also aj like too southern like that I, that's like a thing i heard about you know why I didn't didn't want aj styles back in the day because if you think his accent is like crazy now like you know this man hates the south like <laughs> Oh, that's that's also true. Oh no, so, also no, no. I think no. It is more. Yes, he probably. Yes, he does. But the person that hates it even more is Kevin Dunn. Right. Yeah, Kevin Dunn, not an accent fan. Yeah. So like, you know, this is this is their validation. I hope those guys get to like shove it up WWE's ass essentially. Like, hey, y'all should have been came and got us. Yeah. And Tom, to your point about him not liking accents, gee, that's not problematic at all. You, oh no, and, not at all. No, it's not not at all. <laughs> like that. that like that, like that, like that won't affect that won't affect minorities or foreigners at all. No. Oh man. No. <laughs> um. Yeah, man. So next match I got on the list is the Bludgeon Brothers in the New Day for the WWE Tag Teams Championships of SmackDown. Um. Now we'll get to it later, but the Usos are not on the card, right? So I'm just going by the, the wiki list, James. So I'm not like. Hey, hey, the Usos were on the card last year, neither. Correct. So. I was. So I don't know how you do that. You had a best match on on the show, but not on the card. I don't. I, where did you do that at? Yes. So we've got. I think the Bludgeon Brothers have absolutely murdered um, the SmackDown Tag Team Division, and essentially like, bludgeoned. yeah, literally bludgeoned it and with those hammers. And New Day is here to to correct all the wrongs. I watched a promo um, earlier of the Usos and New Day promo leading into Fastlane, I believe it was, or Elimination Chamber when they had their tag team match and then it got broke up by the bludgeon brothers i watched that promo then i thought imagine throwing your tag team in uh, division in the garbage after seeing that and that's literally what wwe did so was that was that the one where they go back and forth about you out here dancing and then uh, biggie interrupts and says we we rushed the field and we didn't get it we didn't get all our stuff what was handed to us from our daddies yes 
Yeah. 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 That was incredible. Yep. And then Usos, you know, the, the influence for our, our sideline segment, they were like WrestleMania 27 sideline, 28 sideline, 29 sideline, everything <laughs> like it, it just made you feel for those dudes. And here the, the Usos are again, sidelined, uh, watching the bludgeon brothers. But I think the new day are going to bring it back home. I didn't want to spend too much time on this. I just wanted to, you know, get that out there. What did you guys think about uh, this match? Um, I don't know how much time this thing is going to get. I probably I'll be surprised if this thing got ten minutes. But uh, I think that this will be the best match that the, that the Bludgeon Brothers uh, will have had um, in this run since uh, since completely slaughtering the SmackDown Tag Division. And you know, it's time. You know, given that we're in Brooklyn and. You know, the coming out party for New Day was Brooklyn 2015 at SummerSlam. It'd be a nice, you know, full circle thing for uh, from a from a, you know, from a long story, te- from a long storytelling standpoint to see them come back into the place where they became made that night and and become the merch guys that they are. And, you know, start start trying to start a next chapter. That'd be great, especially now that we have the bar on SmackDown Live, and you still have the Usos, uh, uh, an, all-time, an all-time great rivalry. I don't care if Chad wrote it in the book yet or not in the right section, but <laughs> that's where... So I, I, I'm, I'm really excited for the for trying to get this thing back to where it was last year. Yeah, yeah, no, I definitely agree on that. I mean, I think you said you'd be surprised if it gets 10 minutes. I think I'm, like, looking at the card right now, I'm definitely... I agree with you on that, because there's just so many matches to get through. Too many I matches. I feel like every, like big four pay-per-view with WWE recently. It's been like, yeah, we get two or three like good matches at the start. Like they get a lot of time. And then you hit a point like two hours into the show where it's just like, all right, we need to start getting these things done with. Yeah. And like, I think that's what happened at mania. They got like five minutes. Yeah. I don't know. Like, I just, I do hope new day brings it home though. Like it's time to start getting some good matches back in that tag division with all the talent they have there. I mean, even if Killian Dane's wrestling in a singlet, I would like to see Sanity start doing some, uh, <laughs> some good wrestling. Yeah, like they gave they gave the Bludgeon Brothers in uh, a five minute squash match of the two best tag uh, the two best tag uh, teams of I don't know how long and or two of the best tag teams of the last decade and why so that John Cena can fuck off for a half hour and then get squashed in two minutes and forty seconds or some shit like that. Unbelievable! Yeah, this is unforgivable. This is unbelievable. Um, and they had yeah. wasn't uh, wasn't Elias before that Cena Undertaker stuff too? Like you yes. get a five minutes yeah. on camera. Yes, it was all mixed yeah, in. They, they had, they, you know, we always talk about building stars and like if like, you know, fifty like our our problems with fifty bookings because it, it it helps eradicate the fact that you're actually building people. You just make yeah. everybody just the same, and it's communism, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's communism. You got American fucks. Wow. <laughs> anyway, so. Uh, once you do that with, with Elias, where like this dude is, this dude gets, gets all the heat. People love him when he comes out and does his thing. He's not my, he's not my bag, but people love him, so I gotta rock with it, right? So I can't, I can't like everything, but if the crowd loves it, then fine. And they bring him out there, and he's not on the card wrestling at all. And they have him come out there, and they have him get his ass by John Cena for like the second time, um, in in, in, in recent in recent time. And then just so that John Cena can get his ass whooped, it's like, yo, this is like some like transitive property of stupid. Like John Cena looks like trash. And he, he's still a, he's still your biggest star he wants to be. And then you also made this other guy that you built up look like trash as well. Like just just new just, shit. Oh, so the Undertaker can can literally uh, you know basically go through the motions. Like okay, cool, I guess. Um, next match, uh, Braun Strowman versus Kevin Owens. Singles match for the Money in the Bank contract. Should Strowman lose by DQ or count out, he will lose the contract. I've laid my theory out that Braun Strowman has already gotten screwed by even being in this match, period. Because he never got the chance to become the number one contender for Brock Lesnar because, you know, his whole thing was, I got the briefcase. And all of a sudden, you're in a briefcase match where you can get fucked by a dude that's running away from you like a bitch. So... Um, this match is uh, tied into the main event uh, where, you know, a lot of folks are predicting the winner will cash in that night. So, Tom, what are, what are your whole thinkings, uh, your, your, your thoughts about how they make Kevin Owens look on this feud? Has Strowman kind of found a way to, like, regain what he may have lost by not going for the belt at certain times? Uh, you know, what are your thoughts on it? 
I mean, I definitely don't love what this feud has done to Kevin Owens. I mean, just looking back on like the Prize Fighter KO debut, like I think I watched his the the, uh, the clip on YouTube of him debuting against Cena, and I was like, wow, like this is a completely different person than we have in this feud. And I mean, while we're just talking about how they look in this feud, it's not like Strowman's really getting elevated by this. I mean, he's overcoming it because I guess he's just that big at this point. But I mean, it's Jason. It's not. Yeah, it's just it's not helping anybody. I mean, I hope they don't fuck over Strowman. I feel like they're gonna, but I don't know. I mean, it should be a fun match. It'll be probably not the longest thing because it's the Braun Strowman match. But if nothing else, I'll be sports entertained for six minutes. Uh, James, what are you thinking? Yeah, uh, I think that this match could be bad. Um, I mean, I haven't seen it, but like I, I didn't hear too much love given to um, their cage match outside of you know Kevin Owens trying to kill himself again. But uh, yeah, I you know this is really a, a thing that I feel like this is a bad. This was. They made it work because Kevin Owens is very, very talented and, um, and very versatile, and um, and Braun is very, very over. But like, just the dynamics of all this is like, this is very, very, very like. It, there's a lot of parallels between like Steve Austin and Bret Hart uh, in like '96, where it's like, dude, this dude has not is not bothering you. He wants no smoke with you. You keep fucking it, fucking with him and interrupting his life. Leave him the fuck alone. Except. Like, this is Stone Cold Steve Austin bothering Bret Hart. This is the baby face in this situation. This is the baby face terrorizing this poor fucking guy, Kevin Owens. It is like, and it's just like, yo, I can't get away from this dude. Like, he's pour, he's throwing me in porta potties and pushing me over and shit. Like, he's fucked with my car. Like, I can't, I can get away from this fucking dude. And the only thing, the only thing that you can say about, like, what makes this whole, this whole thing together is the, the fact that he was given the prize fighter gimmick in. Money in the bank is a prize. That's the only thing that's still holding this thing together. Like this thing is held together by one strand of duct tape, and that's spitting it. glue. Spitting glue. Um, that's that's yeah. it. Um, not really. Uh, I think this is a match gonna be a. It's filled with smoke and mirrors and gimmicks. Um, I don't know who's gonna win, but it's um, yeah. it's definitely the most intriguing match. Uh, based on like you know what can I, happen in the fallout. I have Ron winning. Um, I have Braun winning, but I have to ask you guys: What stupid thing is Kevin Owens going to do in this match to try to get the match over to himself? Like, what is he going to do to harm himself to get the match over in this in this uh, on SummerSlam on Sunday? All right, do you do you remember that uh, that move where the Undertaker would catch a dude on the top rope and then choke slam the ass and turn around choke slam him through the table? I think that's important. Yeah. Play. Oh God. I well, I mean, that's, that's not the worst thing, but like, I mean, I mean, but then again, we're talking about like, oh yeah, you're gonna fall off scaffolding twenty, uh, twenty or thirty feet to the ground. Oh, you're gonna fall off top of a, of a cage through a table on the ground, and if you miss, and if you miss by another foot, you're gonna be paralyzed and never walk again. Like, yeah, so <laughs> the bar is written, like, yeah, the stakes, but you know, by that standard, that is, you know, that's just normal dumb as opposed to catastrophically, perilously dumb. So yeah, yeah, I guess it is upgrade. Yeah, Tom, what do you think he's gonna do to try to kill himself? I mean, my mind immediately went to bumping off the stage, but that feels like way too tame for what Kevin Owens has done recently. Yeah. Like, it's like, oh, he's only going to fall eight feet? No, no, we need more. We need double-digit amount of feet falling yes. before we get into Kevin Owens' bumps. More like, feet. Is there, any, is there any chance that, like, they can have a monster, a monster truck battle on top of the Barclays Center, and then, like, all of a sudden, like, you know, they struggle, they get outside of it, and they struggle, and then, like, Strowman accidentally – Pushes him off, and it, but tr- before he falls all the way to his death, he reaches down to try to grab him. In, in chance, so he's like, in the, chance, like Hulk Hogan nope. in the giant, unbelievable. Yeah, <laughs> Cobalt yeah, yeah. Hall. Except, except, except in this situation, uh, Ron Strowman's the dude doing the pushing, so like Kevin Owens is gonna die. Hey. Like, straight up, just just die. Hey, sometimes you got to die to get over in these streets. <laughs> um, they um. The next match is Dolph Ziggler versus Seth Rollins for the Intercontinental title. And the return of Dean Ambrose this Monday looking swole um, and like a completely different dude. 
Once again, uh, the hierarchy of the Shield members. Uh, I, I, I'd be interested to see who's uh, excited, the most excited about these guys, and what order they're in, um, and, and look at where they are on the card in uh, relation to that list. Uh, and, and I feel like it's not going to make sense, but these guys, uh, Rollins and Ziggler, you know, they're going to have a IC title match. I don't know. This feels beneath uh, Seth Rollins. I don't know. I'm not really excited for it. It's a rematch of a rematch of a rematch. Yeah, no, you pretty much hit the nail on the head there. Um, I mean, I, I'm i looking at, like, how they might lay out this card, and I feel like this would be a good one to open the show, but the more I think about it, the more I think Ambrose is turning, and I feel like they're not doing that to start the night off. So, I mean, like, this on paper should be a good match. Like, they both work. Like, they're both really good workers, but, like, They've done it so many times. They've, I don't know. It's just a dead horse at this point. Do you guys think that yeah, they're going to want to redeem themselves from last month? I feel like there is going to be an aspect of that. Like you could tell, I think, um, I want to say it was Alvarez who tweeted it like during that match. He was like, yeah, like Seth time to curb stomp right on the minute. So he could try and kill the 10, nine, eight, like countdown to the minute chance. <laughs> so like, I feel like that did like, that did get to Seth a little bit. So I could definitely see him just going balls to the wall here and trying to redeem that. Yeah. But I don't know, like looking at the heat of this match, it just feels like two mega powers that are like just waiting to explode. Like it's like creative's just waiting to pull the trigger on both turns. And obviously mega powers is a generous term for both of these, but I don't know. You get what I'm trying to say. <laughs> James. Yeah, I I, w- I was talking to I was on what what you mean? I mentioned it and I was with Rance and Simon. I asked them like could one of y'all come up with it a, a, with a way for, like, we can get, like, in, I mean, and whether it's, you know, just Sunday or whether it's Sunday and also the following Monday. We get it to where they have a great match. Ziggler is then feuding with, and then immediately, like, we're getting sent to a program where Ziggler is feuding with McIntyre because they've, they've blown up. And then on the other end, you also have Ambrose, and Ron is now setting a program to go forward, and and that and they're not around the IC belt. Like, how do how do we do this? Or maybe they're with the IC belt. I don't care. Like, how do they do this to where we can have this to where we can get through this fall? We get to, get into the fall. They can have their feud or whatever else, or maybe they can extend or whatever else, and we can get to we can get this shit to WrestleMania season or whatever else. And then like, there's a potential for a shield triple threat done the proper way. I'm no fucking. Uh, battleground or whatever the fuck that yeah. was in 2016, right before the brand split. Like, what can we do the proper the proper way and get it done and pretend like that shit never happened? Um, Any ideas? Um, uh, split both of them. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, they could just have somebody hit somebody with a chair. I mean, <laughs> 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 like it really ain't you know too, too much, but you know it'll get you it'll get you going, you know as they say. Um, <laughs> But yeah, uh, something else is getting people going uh, with Charlotte's promo the other night uh, where she looked Carmella dead in the face and said, you are a diva in a woman's era. And this set the internet on fire. As y'all know, I have been coming for Carmella in these title matches and everything that she's done for about three or four months now. Um, I think she's definitely the embodiment of being in the wrong era. And obviously there's no uh, where to put her except the championship uh, or off TV. And since she's not off TV, she has to be the champion. Um, She's going into a triple threat match with car or or, excuse me, with Becky Lynch and Charlotte who have their own issues. Becky looking furious that Charlotte was added to the match. Charlotte being the reluctant friend who's trying to uh, settle with the fact that she's, going for the title also and you know dealing with her friend but realizing hey this is this is competition you got to run it um what are you guys thinking is happening with this match because it's quietly intriguing but Carmelo being in there just just throws off like smoke bombs for me because I'm like yeah this ain't gonna be it Tom I feel like the match kind of needed Charlotte but the few definitely didn't like I would have been completely fine if it was just Becky going for it against Carmella and just getting a clean, like, baby face chasing the title arc to end. Because, like, they actually built her up over the last couple months. Like, it was one of the few examples of WWE actually just giving them the steady winning streak and leading to them challenging for the title. 
I don't think Becky Lynch walks out with the belt, though. I feel like like either Charlotte or Carmella screws her over, but I just don't know where it goes. Like, it would be stupid to keep it on Carmella, but I feel like that's where creative is at this point. That like, that's a decision they could make. James. Um, I mean, I mean, we we okay. Just, just so, so it's a state for the record. All three of us don't trust WWE in the main roster, right? We don't trust them at all, right? Not at all. Oh no. Not okay. At all. So we all fully believe that there's a great possibility that that Carmella is just going to backdoor her way out out of here, and then she could transfer over there. Like, I beat, I beat two of the, I beat on the two same of the women all in one on the same night. <laughs> I'm, I'm on my, Jer- I'm on my Jericho beating Rock and Austin shit. Like, yeah. So I. uh so yeah, they can always do that bullshit. Um, but like, if they want to do something that like is inspired and actually like you know sets a sets a good foot forward on the fact that like they have this open pay per view and that belt will be defended and that match and we we actually give you the possibility that match won't fucking suck. Then um, they'll put it on Carmella. I'm sorry, sorry. I, I'm I'm so sorry. I'll yeah. say that again just to make sure people know, nobody confuses me at all. Uh, if they want to do that, then they'll put the belt on Charlotte or they'll put the belt on Becky. I don't care whoever it is. I prefer it was Becky. But look, I, I, y'all know, like, leaving out of WrestleMania this year, the two best built people leaving out were Charlotte after having the greatest win in women's uh, history in, in that company, being the, being the undefeated Oscar, and Rousey. Um and they cashed it on her, and they did that that dumb shit, and that's where we are now. They can always come back and fix and come in and uh, try to unmake that, or they can go with Becky, who is uh, one of the most likable people on the whole roster had, since she, since the moment she landed on, on the main roster, and someone that almost is like a in a weird way, kind of like a, the conscience of uh, conscious of of the main roster, especially like now that Sami Zayn is a heel. Like you remember when they were doing the mixed match challenge, they were basically like trying to do like the the the, the Kylo Ren and Ray uh, uh, Star Wars thing, where like I'm trying to turn you over to the good side, no, I'm trying to turn you over to the dark side. Like they were trying to, yeah. they were, you know, because they both know, like, you, like, you know, this is the we need to get, we need to get this shit together. Like we need each other on each other's team. Like that's the kind of mad, that's how like infectious Becky's personality is, even how endearing she is while she's doing all that corny shit because she's so likable and. I, I think this is a really nice uh, position she's in, like with her character. Where like, you know, she's happy for. Her. She's you know she she loves. I mean, she loves Charlotte, but like, she'll break her arm. You know, we, joke, we always joke about it. Like, but when does Becky finally get her time to shine? And as opposed to Charlotte getting, or sorry, Charlotte getting her chance at, um, in winning WrestleMania matches. Uh, Sasha going up, being able to go out there and turn her house down with Charlotte, and being you know, and having great TV matches, and and having other great, ma- very good matches on pay per view, like Be- Bailey coming in and getting a push through WrestleMania and being being a champion at the time. Like she got, she was an inaugural SmackDown Women's Champion, and then like she got fucked over because uh, it's time to push this Alexa Bliss bullshit. So like, I, you know, their jealousy sleeps in. She could possibly turn. That's intriguing. Like I'm really, you know. Out of all the stuff that's been going on, like this whole this whole little thing and their relationship um, between Charlotte and Becky, like this is one of the more interesting interesting things they've done, and they did a really good job with this all the way through. And I mean, out of all the women's stuff they've done so far, that doesn't involve Rousey this year or or involve WrestleMania. Like this is, might be like this might be the best thing they've done because like that Bailey and Sasha shit is just isn't I hitting on nothing right now. Yeah, man, Sasha and Bailey, like that thing's an absolute disaster. Um, you know, and, 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 yeah, and I just like to um, send a special shout out to everybody that said that they wanted to wait. Uh, they were waiting for WWE to uh, build this up so they could fight in Brooklyn, um, and you know, and just roll it over past WrestleMania when they didn't get to wrestle there. Um, Let me guess, they're saying now they're gonna hold it off for the Evolution. And, yep, we just gonna keep kicking the can down the road. Like, man, stop. Like, <laughs> like. Like we're gonna miss uh, WrestleMania and SummerSlam for another show. I, I, I you know, I, I throw look my hands a up. show that they just created out of thin air like a month ago. Yes, yes. Ah, oh, boy, boy. Um, Shinsuke Nakamura, and Jeff Hardy. I feel like these guys are just having a match. I don't care. Nakamura, uh, his, his think about him going into last SummerSlam and then the loss of Jinder Mahal. His career was never the same. I feel like, and he's you know in the United States, he's a United States champion. People still like him to a 
certain extent, but he's never going to be what he thought he was. Jeff Hardy's wash, old, knees, complete dust on the inside of them. But yeah. this whole thing's about Randy Orton. Am yeah. I missing something here, yeah. Tom? No, it's. I mean, I was actually talking to one of the guys I went to high school with who like also watches, um, and he was like, oh, yeah, like SummerSlam doesn't look half bad this year. And like one of the matches he mentioned was this one. And I was kind of like, really? Like, you're excited for this? Like, it's <laughs> both guys are, are like, Nakamura's not washed. He's just not as hot as he could have been. And then Jeff Hardy legitimately is washed. Like, I, and also, like you said, like, it's, Orton seems to be the center of the storyline, and he's just not there. Like, I, it's puzzling, to say the least. Yeah. It's, I'm definitely not, like, too hyped, but... I don't know. This is just the main roster at this point. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I'm really weird on this one because it's like Nakamura, from all accounts, is doing so well at, with the new heel turn, and then like he kept losing to AJ and kept losing to AJ, and then like you're like, oh yeah, well he is still very, very fucking good, and like the heel turn is like a nice character change for him, and he's more interesting. So let's give him the U.S. title, and now he's a, he's a U.S. champion, but like. They're not letting him come out there and like you know do the things that make him so great. Like he's been doing all this spot duty stuff, more or less. Like he's here and there for like a flash, and then he's gone. As opposed to like he's in a match and he kills somebody. I mean, our true thing happened last week, but like that's pretty much from the three weeks I've seen. Like that's the most he's done is that, and then like beating up, you know, helping Randy Orton beat up Jeff Hardy. Like they've been tag teaming that dude. Um, and the Randy Orton thing, I just don't know exactly what that means for the future because. Nigel Moore's clearly a heel. Randy Orton just turned heel. If Jeff gets, if they, if they beat Jeff and he moves on, then you're going to do a heel versus heel feud or whatever else, or maybe they tag team. I don't know. I don't know. I don't also, know. I don't know what's next. Also, it'd be a weird call to do heel versus heel with like two of the heels that you're going to have a hard time getting booed already. Yeah. Yeah. Like. Boy, this is a, this is some real mind warp shit. Like, all right, yes. we got two heels like, that, versus, that get that get cheered. Yes. <laughs> heel versus heel versus heel, while the crowds out here screaming, "Let's go!" Or in Nakamura. <laughs> yes, you're, you're, you're. I didn't think about it until you Unbelievable. Yes, that's exactly what happened. Like popular heels, heel, popular heel versus heel. Go figure. Well, I know somebody that ain't no popular hero, and that's Baron Corbin, and uh, he's going to be fighting against Finn Balor. Uh, hopefully this match is real nice and short. Uh, just like last year, Baron Corbin going into SummerSlam, he probably has less momentum then. Um, he's cut his, he's going in with a lot less hair and a lot uh, weirder clothes this time, but this dude has been the rest lock master or the, the chin lock master uh, over the last couple of weeks. They've been letting him go 20 minutes on Raw. I don't know who the fuck is booking that, but Good fucking God. Tom, help me out here. Man, I I, I struggle to care. I wish I could help you out, but <laughs> I also am struggling to care here. I mean, <laughs> like, at some point, I just can't hear Baron Corbin call Finn short anymore. I feel like you said everything. Like, <laughs> I don't want to see Baron ref. James? Signing up for that? Yeah, man, so... Baron Corbin, I'm trying to think, how can I describe perfectly on how, like, m- how much he hasn't improved and how, like, he's still just, like, a, car- a-, a vacuum for charisma to-, to go off and die? Like, he is so uncharismatic that, like, he decreases, like, the birth rate. Like people Man. don't want to have sex after watching him wrestle. That's how. That's how bad. That's that's how that, that people. That's how unenthusiastic, unexpiring this dude is. Like this dude is. This dude is is he's ass dumplings. Like he's just just <laughs> trash, bro. Like, and he's not. The thing is, like, he's not a bad. He's not a bad wrestler, but he's just sorry, right? Like he's not the worst one I've ever seen. I wouldn't even That's a big difference. That's an important distinction, James. But Explain the concept of sorry. So, like, for example, um, somebody that has some something going for them, but like nothing has really happened at the same time. He is sorry. Like, for example, the perfect NBA player described as sorry would be like, remember Josh Smith? Yes. Like, a couple, yeah, cool. yeah, like, yeah, one of the super athletic guy, dunk contest winner, um, was a really good defensive player, um, could fill the stash, he could do all these sorts of things. But ultimately, like you know, was a player on a team, or second best player on a team that made a playoff on a run of playoffs a bunch of times, a third best player, and could do all these sorts of things. But like, didn't have the focus, 
couldn't really depend on him or whatever else, especially like in like let's say he's playing it's two thousand nine or ten and he's like in a playoff series against LeBron James, LeBron's just gonna smoke him and get him the fuck out of there. Like he, he like he's talented, but sorry. Just like just there's no Sorry. Like, there's just nothing compelling him there's nothing compelling him to get better or to like or to reach outside like himself and to be beyond that. Like there's nothing like that. Like he is a classic underachiever underachiever motherfucker. Like he just is. Oh man, Baron Corbin, sorry as hell. Um, speaking of somebody that ain't sorry, uh, the the best few going, I think, going to WWE right oh, now. Oh, 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 oh. I, I got some more. I got some more in this Baron Corbin shit. So he was in that match. <laughs> who did he, who did he wrestle on? Uh, he Tyler Breeze, right? Yeah. Yep. That was how long did that match go? Five minutes, four minutes? About four minutes. Too long, however long it was. Okay. I don't. I didn't stop watching, but I thought about it. Do you, did he even go thirty seconds before immediately putting him into a fucking uh, into a fucking chin lock? No, I, 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 I took a, I took a picture no, of it. Certainly not. In a five minute match, <laughs> what the fuck is that? What are you doing? Oh, that man's sorry, Kevin, bro. It's, like Kevin Owens thinks that dude is that man's ridiculous with it with the fucking uh, chin locks. <laughs> yeah, man. the mayor of Chinlock City thinks he overdoes it. Unbelievable, but yeah, man, Daniel Bryan and the Miz. Um, for me, this is the only match I really have any type of investment in, and these I think they've done an excellent job uh, putting it all together. Uh, aside from you know a couple warts here and there, like the thing with the babies, and also like uh, having Dale Bryan charge Miz while he was wearing a child, essentially that turned out to be a fake baby. Um, they and I feel like when they started hey, calling on hey, Dale Bryan, yeah, Rich, the Miz is light years ahead. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, look, he just knew that that baby face was gonna come out there and, and possibly <laughs> assault him while, while while his daughter was was attached to his chest. So why I swapped the baby out with a doll and then I attacked? I'm light years ahead. Unbelievable. That boy, um, that boy got a time machine. That boy got a time machine. Yes. <laughs> so they've um. They've they've told a great story through the video packages, and they've leaned on the history. And once they started having Daniel Bryan start doing the heavy lifting with his promo ability, Miz obviously rose to the occasion with his. And these guys have talked me into the building, uh, per se. Um, Daniel Bryan's contract status still up in the air. You know he does have that mode in 2k19 which necessarily isn't related to wwe because the video game and wwe are kind of two separate things but um Damn punk when you use that as a reference right for why that don't matter right so what happens here like it, i i think we're finally going to get a great Daniel Bryan pay-per-view match um tom what, what you got on this feud i mean my first like note on this was just and this goes back to AJ versus Joe actually because like I feel like AJ versus Joe and AJ versus Nakamura this year were both like oh yeah they could like tell a really interesting story if they just acknowledged that other promotions existed and then I feel like this is one of those feuds that like they didn't really need to do that for and they've just told the story pretty much spot on like it all kind of played out on WWE TV so they just got to use all their own footage for it and now here we are I mean like you said, Brian's contract status is up in the air. I like. I hope that doesn't mean they put Miz over him because that would be just a huge wet blanket to show over the to throw over the show. Like, I don't think Brian's at a point where you can really have him losing pay per view matches yet. Uh, but if he hasn't resigned, like, I don't know how many big wins they want to give him. I mean, what are you guys thinking? Yeah, James. Um. I sort of think Miz kind of should win this regardless of the contract situation or whether he's settled or is not or whether he's leaving or if he's going or if he ultimately does leave or if he ultimately does stay. I kind of think Miz kind of needs to win this thing um, because that because that is forever heat and this company loves it, it himself some forever heat. Like the whole story is you said like is Miz, like the whole thing is like Miz's whole gimmick is the fact that like he's not tough. He's not uh, he's not a, 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 a uh, say a proficient uh, technical wrestler, so you have him come in, but he has, but he can run his mouth and he can gloat on you all day, and he's one of the best gloaters ever, and he needs his thing to, to gloat about. And if he beats Daniel Bryan, he will be gloating about that until he can, until Vince tells him he can no longer do that because Daniel Bryan is somewhere else. So you kind of need that. 
um, you kind of you kind of really do need that for the missing to work. And seeing that like Nakamura <clears throat> is a heel champion, and they're probably not going to thrust him into the uh, the main event um, spot with AJ for the title. This would be the time for them to. This would be the thing for him to be able to gloat on people for for months and get get all the heat he's worth. Um, so that's and I mean he doesn't have heaters like he did before with the B team or with Maurice and. Um, so I think this would be the time for him to have something to be able to hold in front of people and sh- put in their face and, and antagonize them with. And I, th- and I think it'd be great. And, you know, I'm not really a fan of, I, I mean, if it were me, I have Daniel Bryan smash this fucking dude, but you know, you don't know if he's going to stay. So if he, so if he's not going to stay, then like, you can't, then you roll, you roll with the guy you have. Right. Um, you would think that, but I do, but I, but yeah, I mean, what do y'all guys think of how, of the storytelling inside of the, inside of the whole video packages from last night. So I think they did a thing where they ignored like a bunch of other times that they wrestled each other randomly on TV, but I won't hold that against Mm -hmm. them because it's not necessarily a part of the story. Um, Mm -hmm. I thought that the, um, the, the video packages were great. They let Brian just pretty much talk to the camera and Miz talk to the camera and talk about these guys being polar opposites, but they are in a, in a sense made for each other which is like strange and mm-hmm. this could oddly be like one of it's a, it's a story only WWE can do because I don't think Miz would really get a shot anywhere else and <clears throat> this right. is Daniel Bryan has always excelled with guys like that necessarily weren't on his level and I don't think any of us would say the Miz is on Daniel Bryan's level but there is something for Miz uh you know to basically uh you know come out there and say, you know, I've done this, I've done this, I've done this for this long, and I've been a successful WWE competitor, and he'll lean right into that shit. And, you know, I, I no, no matter who they, you know, pick to win, I think it's not the end. And I just want the match to be great, because I want Dale Bryan great matches on pay-per-view back. So let them wow me like that's that's because like i'm looking up and down this card they've got nothing but rematches they've got matches i really don't care about they've got stuff that just needs to just be the fuck on gone this isn't that this has the potential to go as long as they want and they can always get it back hot if they have to come back to it yeah i um like the video, the video package last night. Like I, you know, watching the whole thing. Like I really enjoyed their the promo. Um, I want to say two weeks ago, um, until they did the whole baby thing at the end, which I thought it was just corny as whack. And like they literally just doused doused that heat with with water. Um, but like the whole story of, you know, we always talk about, for example, uh, Aubrey Citizen used to always say like. I hate feuds or robberies that are based on respect. Like it's worse than and this one is just total. Like it's about this one is about respect, but it's the about other way. respect. But it's about respect from each other to try to prove to each other like their way is the right way. And when Miz comes out and says that, the Miz whole thing is like, I don't respect you, or Daniel Bryan. Said, I don't respect you because you wrestle like a coward. You wrestle like you saw. And then Miz whole thing is he's insecure about the fact that he he knows. Every, that he knows that he wrestles like a coward, like whether it was, whether it was even, you know, I think a part of that, I mean, it wasn't told, it wasn't expressly stated, but like the fact that Daniel Bryan has said explicitly, like, I want to punch Miz in the face after Miz went through that whole, that whole year or so when he was doing the moneymaker gimmick, when him Sandow was around 2015, yeah. uh, 14 <clears throat> or whatever else. It's like, this ain't about winning like and losing. That, even stuff about like that is just like, Yo, these, I mean, I'm sure the, I mean, obviously they're friends, but like, or friendly anyway. Um, but like, I wonder how much of, how much of this they thought about for years and years and years. Like, if we ever get an opportunity where we were like, Miz and get his career back on track, or if I'm healthy on Dan Bryan's end, like, if they could do this. And like, Talk is Smack blew this thing open to where like, oh yeah, these dudes have this gigantic history. And it was, you know, and we always thought like, you know, this was kind of done like after like, the U.S. title run stuff in 2010 with, like, when Morrison was involved as well. And then, like, Daniel Bryan blew up. And, like, Miz had faded. So this is kind of over, right? I mean, looking back at his retrospect, like, it's kind of over. Then, like, you know, he's gone. Miz blows up again by, like, saving the mid-card on SmackDown Live when, after the brand split. And, like, Daniel Bryan's back now. 
and like they have the chance to actually like literally be one of the you know one of the best long story long term stories they've ever put together and they all and they, and they all by all accident. by accident these all completely by accident none of you know, Dan well, this man never thought neither one of these dudes was that kind of star. They treated both of them like geeks. Remember when um when Dan or um you had Cole was uh was a hill announcer killing Dan Brown doing the coal miner shit. And he was and they were saying like he was a virgin he was saying that uh, Dan Brown was a virgin and a geek. And you know, and Miz his whole entire his whole entire storyline, all of his successes in, in the pro wrestling is in WWE has been about the fact that that dude's a geek, but he keeps winning, and that's his heat. But he's the only one that's actually really good at it. He's not like Alexa Bliss, or he's not like, um, or he's not like Baron Corbin, or he's not like Carmella. There's like, oh yeah, they actually just aren't really give you nothing. This dude's actually a great promo, and <clears throat> in the last two years, the wrestling has came around on him because you kept busting his ass, and this is where he's gotten to, as opposed to those other clowns. So I, I, I'm really excited for Sunday night. Tom, what what are your what are your thoughts on this whole thing? I know we went kind of long uh, there, but it's yeah, the best dude. thing going. Oh, for sure. I mean, just one note on Miz's career. I forget where I heard it, but <clears throat> like if you look at his for somebody that's been pretty much a career heel, except for that baby face run that I don't like to talk about. <laughs> like, his real life story like reads weirdly like a baby face story. Like he gets yep. into this business, he's completely overmatched, like people are wrestling circles around him and then like a decade into it he's like married he has a career revival and it's just like yeah no everything kind of came up for the mist so i mean good on him for that but as far as this match goes yeah no i i'm really looking forward to it i think one thing that i think we've seen with all the brian matches since he's been back is how much a really really hot crowd can just kind of smoke and mirror as a match like that match with Cass was good and, like, I did not want to give it a chance. And then there was just so much heat behind it because it was Brian. Yep. And, I mean, now he's in there with somebody that's actually qualified and he actually has, like, history. So, if nothing else, it's going to be, like, an exercise in working a crowd and getting that to get the match over. Yeah. So, th- this could be, like, the, the first real sign of, like, the the Daniel Bryan that we hope WWE uh, decides to run with. Oh, for sure. Like... I mean, I think I think for the I think for the betterment of, of both of them, I think that Miz probably should win. But like I can't wait till Brian punches that face. I can't I can't wait. I cannot wait, moneymaker. Fuck out of here. <laughs> like, you know, like and also, you know, you made a good you made a good point, Tom, about like the failed uh, baby face run in two thousand uh, the TL from two L C two thousand twelve to I don't know when he turned back ill, but like I remember me and Rich when it happened because it was the same night as uh, the Del Rio face turn. And yeah. we were just like, yo, this, these two, you know, they're actually really likable. Maybe they give them a chance. And then nope, nope. Nobody <laughs> liked it. They sure didn't. Like, I, I, feel like if, I feel like if Miz got another chance at a, at a baby face run, he, he would, like, you know, I think it would go up very, very well. Like, there are certain people that I think if they get a baby face run, it would do very well with it. I think if Kevin Owens gets a baby face run, it'll be huge. I, okay. think, if Lex, I, think, I think if Alex gets a baby face run, it'll do very well, too. Um, so, uh, you know, but, you know, they love their heat in this company and they can't bail but any baby faces. So, you know, we'll just have to wait on those. All right. That'll wrap up our SummerSlam uh, review. We will be back with my segment to close out the show. Sideline. Sideline. Oh, my niggas, if you're with me, where you at? Oh, oh my yeah, soldiers, if you're with me, where you at? Oh, oh my hustlers, if you're with me, where you at? Oh, yeah. oh, 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 yeah. oh, oh, where you at? Oh, oh, where you at? Oh, oh, where you at?
All right, we are back. So, uh, welcome b- back to Sidelined. So, uh, this <laughs> this this segment, uh, you know, this goes in our pay per view previews um, at the end, and it's called Sidelined. And you know, these are the people that are not on the show. Um, AOP Sidelined, Apollo Cruz Sidelined, Bobby Lashley Sidelined, Bobby Roode Sidelined, Bray Wyatt Sidelined. Chad Gable, sideline. Kurt Hawkins, sideline. Elias, sideline. Jinder Mahal, sideline. The Ascension, sideline. Matt Hardy, sideline. Mike Kanellis, sideline. Mojo Raleigh, sideline. No Way Jose, called up after WrestleMania, sideline. Rhino and Slater, <coughs> sideline. Titus O'Neil, over. All everywhere in the community, but in WWE, he is sidelined. Tyler Breeze, yeah. sidelined. Zack Ryder, hot on the internet, but in real life, he is sidelined. Every single cruiserweight except Drew Gulak and Alexander, who are stuck on the pre show, sidelined. Alicia Fox, who main evented Monday Night Raw against Ronda Rousey, sidelined. Bailey, one of the <laughs> biggest uh, women's wrestlers on the roster, sidelined. Dana Brooks, sidelined. Ember Moon, who had the champion dead to rights, sidelined. The Riot Squad, sidelined. Sasha Banks, the the greatest um, uh, woman this country has ever produced as a wrestler. (laughs) Sideline. Aiden English, sideline. Sanity, sideline. Also called up after WrestleMania. The Bar, sideline. Arguably the greatest tag team of all time in WWE. The Usos, sideline. The Club, sideline. The Colognes, sideline. Randy Orton, sideline. Shelton Benjamin, sideline. Sin Cara, uh, sideline, Ty Dillinger, sideline, R Truth, can't nobody shuck and jive like him, sideline, Asuka, <laughs> and stay, and stay the fuck there. Yes, Asuka, sidelined, unbelievable. After winning the, the Women's Royal Rumble, after challenging for the championship, after losing like a dumbass uh, twice in a row, sideline, the Iconics, sideline, Absolution, sidelined. That is our complete list of everyone at the sideline. That is absolutely insane. Yeah, uh, I'm, 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 I know people. I'm, I'm just blanking on this. Who the fuck is the club, bro? Who's in the club? Am I just blanking on that? Carl Anderson, Luke Gallows, sideline. Oh, those guys. Yeah, stay your ass on the sideline. Everyone ever, and, and everyone never- on the pre-show. That is Cedric Alexander and Drew Gulak, Rusev and Lana against Aiden or uh, Andrade San Almas and Zelina Vega, and the B team, the Raw Tag Team Championships. Bo Dallas and Curtis Axel versus the Revival, all on the pre-show, which essentially is sidelined. Yeah, like they they basically got they basically in the they they like they're on the bench, right? Like they're they in the, no. but they're not in the they're not in the suit, but they're in the jumpsuit. They're in the jumpsuit with the shorts on, but they ain't, it might actually might have had the shorts on. They know they ain't gonna play. They're the like Chetty Osmond in the finals. They know they're not getting on yes. there. Yes. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yes. John Sally, uh, Bill Winnington, <laughs> um, I'm trying to think, uh, nice. Jawan Howard, <laughs> look, Miss Richmond, Jawan Howard, uh, for the Heat, um, you know, all those. That, that's what these guys on the pre show are. But yeah, those are all the look, guys uh, that are left off. What up, what up, James? I'm about to say T Mag in 2013 finals. Oh, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, that's going to wrap up the show. Tom, thank you for coming on uh, with us. Uh, let everybody know where they can follow you on social media and also plug uh, some of your work on socialsuplex.com. All right. Uh, let's see. You can follow me on Twitter. I'm at, at TheRealBigTom98. Made that uh, sweet username in my freshman year of high school. <laughs> Aged really well. Uh, if you search up Stone Cold Steve Boston, that is also me. Uh, and then on Instagram at Gambo nine eight nine eight, and also check out the weekly NXT reviews. I should be having that out probably tomorrow during the day. Sounds uh, good, man. So yeah, thanks for having me on, guys. For sure, man. Um, James, yeah, uh, any, anything uh, you you want to add before we uh, wrap this shit up? Oh, I mean, uh, as a Florida State fan, I know this is you know, typical when I think of Florida State. I'm talking about that bitch about Jimbo Fish, but he's gone now. We're moving we're past that. But I just wanted to talk about today. Uh, the GQ article uh, featuring quotes where uh, uh, from Jalen Ramsey, former Seminole, uh, current elite quarterback in the NFL, talking about quarterbacks in the NFL and his, his evaluations of them, and uh, he and like he was hilarious, and I, I'm just happy that like already by year two he has already set himself up to be like the great brash quarterback of the NFL already. And yes. the play already back, and the play is already backed up before he even became a star like this. I love it. 
I'm so happy. And he's calling all I'm, these. I'm so proud. He's calling all these quarterbacks. Sorry, like Baron Corbin, but um, <laughs> make sure you guys um check out everything uh that's you know been going on on uh, Social Suplex Podcast Network. Uh, what you mean just dropped uh, a little bit earlier as before we recorded this. So check that out with James Simon and Rance. Uh, check out all the rest of the shows on the Social Suplex Podcast Network. Make sure you guys uh, listen to the Hiroshi Tanahashi rant. Yes, the Ace won the G one and I lost my shit uh, over that. So, in a good way. Not like this Alexa Bliss one that I went on and I was, like, giving it to him. So, I got a question for you. Right? So, like, on a scale of 1 to 10, how, def- how like, disappointed or deflated will you be if, like, Okada beats that man for the, for the, for the contract? I think I'll be at, like, a 10. I- I'll be at a 10. Okay. Because, okay. like, look, because I was saying to them uh, last night, like, Okada shouldn't, Okada shouldn't, like, I mean, maybe a title shot here or there, but like he should not be the champion until at the earliest like Dominion twenty twenty, after the run he just had. Like, yeah. let Naito get his run of run eventually. Like, depending on the Kenny situation, um, or whatever else he might have to come earlier. But like, maybe give Tanahashi his uh, uh, another run or whatever, like a nostalgia run or whatever, because he's hot as hell right now. Yes, but like, but Okada needs to. I mean. He's one of the top. He's one of the big four, but he needs to be away from that belt right now. Yeah, but uh, make sure you guys. Uh, what else we got? I got Chad's book here. Check out Chad's book. It's uh, for sale right now on on Amazon or anywhere else you can get your uh, online reading. Uh, the greatest matches and rivalries of the WrestleMania era. I did theme song for it. So, uh, but yeah. Besides that, that's gonna wrap it up. Thank you guys for listening. I've been a little bit under the weather today. I don't know if you guys can tell and how amazingly I sound and all that shit and the sniffling. But uh, thanks for sticking with us, and enjoy SummerSlam or NXT uh, TakeOver. And if it sucks, we will be here to kill it. You already know. Maybe. (laughs) That's going to end it, man. Peace. Later. Thank you for listening to One Nation Radio. We'll see you next time.